morning and welcome to worship at the Bath Church United Church of Christ in Bath, Ohio. I'm Jill Small, the interim senior pastor here. We are doing real worship in virtual space and it's my pleasure to welcome you to this service, especially if you're joining us for the first time. If you find meaning in this service, I hope you'll share the link with your family, friends, and neighbors so that they too can join us because whoever you are, wherever you are, you are welcome here. Today, when we exchange the sign of peace, I hope that you will do so with those in your household and also that as you watch our broadcast that you will tweet or text or leave a comment so that others in turn can share that sign of peace with you. Today, we are celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion, so I hope you will have some bread or crackers, uh, juice or water, something with you to be able to participate in the sacrament. In addition to this service, today we are doing drive-in church at 10 a.m. on the Bath Church campus. If you didn't sign up uh, in advance, RSVP, to let us know you were coming and you'd like to join us, if, if you like this so much that you want to do it a second time live and in person, you're welcome to do that. Um, please plan to arrive no later than 9.45 so that we can have all the cars positioned for the best sight lines and begin our worship uh, promptly at 10. Uh, we will ask people who do come to that service to remain in their cars for the entire worship experience. We will have uh, communion there also, and uh, sealed cups with uh, wafers will be distributed if you don't bring your own uh, elements with you. Once again, it's a pleasure to invite you to participate in our worship service, have you join us for this time together. So again, uh, welcome and uh, let us be the church together, worshiping God in spirit and in truth. Good morning, Bath Church friends, family, and guests. My name is Meg Lamb, and it is my privilege to be with you this Sunday morning. I invite you to join me in our call to worship. This is the day that God has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. May we find rest and renewal in our worship. May we extend hospitality and peace to one another. This is the day that God has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Please pray with me. Eternal Spirit, God of those who have come before us, those who live among us, those who will come after us, 
Confirm in us the power of your peace and the peace of your power. Accept our thanks for the great cloud of witnesses that surround us and make us bold to live into the new good news of life everlasting. Hear us as we come to you in silence. Holy God, thank you for hearing our prayers. Amen. Holy God, we praise your name. this prayer of illumination. Unstop our ears, God. Help us hear your call so that we, like Jacob, may speak your truth and follow you more faithfully each day. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Genesis 32 verses 22 to 31. The same night he got up and took his two wives, his two maids, and his eleven children and crossed the ford of the Jabbok. He took them and sent them across the stream, and likewise everything that he had. Jacob was left alone, and a man wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man saw that he did not prevail against Jacob, he struck him on the hip socket, and Jacob's hip was put out of joint as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go, for the day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. So he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. Then the man said, You shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with humans and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, Please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And there he blessed him. So Jacob called the place Peniel, saying, For I have seen God face to face, and yet my life is preserved. The sun rose upon him as he passed Peniel, limping because of his hip. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
the kids together and we talk about what the lessons are today and what we're going to take from that today. Now I realize we have drive in church and I might make it a little different from that but today we're talking about Jesus feeding the multitudes and I always find this story really interesting because Jesus does it twice. So he does it once then they go across the lake and he does it some more. So 5,000 and 4,000. And then he's sitting with the disciples and after feeding over 10,000 people, because right, they didn't count the women and children in those 5,000 and 4,000 numbers. After feeding over 10,000 people, they get to the other side of the lake and the disciples are sitting with Jesus and they say, we forgot the bread. As though Jesus couldn't feed the 13 of them. <laughs> so I always find that interesting. And I think that there is obviously a moment about faith there. That if you have faith, you can be fed. And you can hear the word, right? So it's, it's no accident that those kind of go in that order. And Jesus has to explain to them um, what the bread is is and what the bread of life is and, and what that all means. But I was thinking about it today because we talk about communion and we take these little pieces of bread after we break it and we eat them and we eat them together to signify that moment when we're together. And as much as it reminds me of the Last Supper, it also reminds me of these stories and I think about how Jesus responded to these stories. I mean, he could have easily said, go back to your house and get food. Go back to your house, go someplace else and find food. We don't have enough food for you. But instead he was not only moved with compassion because people were probably hungry after hearing him preach all day, but they were also probably in this great communion, you know that feeling when you come to church where there's this great communion of people? And I think there's something to be said about the communion and the Last Supper and what we do together, about really being that hospitality piece, that we should break bread together, that we should be together in meals and love each other. But a lot of times it stays right within our walls, in our church walls. And it's even harder now when we're not together, right? We all get our own little elements and we take them. If we're out in our cars, we do the same thing. It doesn't really feel communal. So I wondered how we might be able to 
make a communal feeling. Even though we may not be breaking bread with people right now. So I have a little challenge for you. I want you to go find some post-it notes or maybe some just some little kind of stickies or, or little tiny notes that you may have. And I want you to write some kind things on there. You can use scripture like you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Um, you can say things like God loves you or you can just say you are loved. You are amazing. I hope you have the very best day. And what I want you to do is take those little notes and put them with you when you go somewhere. I know we're not going a lot of places, but most of us are even going to the store or running over to a neighbor's house. I want you to post those on their door or on someone's windshield at the store. Anything to share our love and our welcome and our hospitality. Just like Jesus took that bread and broke it and spread it amongst all of those people, we can do the same with God's love. So that's my challenge for you. See you soon. Well, it's always a pleasure to worship with you and it's an even greater pleasure to pray with you each and every Sunday. As Jill said early on, we wanted to bring to you some different ways to say the Lord's Prayer. So we'll move this pastoral prayer into the Lord's Prayer. And it may sound a little different to you. You can always pray the one that you pray. Um, but each tradition has their own way to say it. And I think it's great to be able to hear that. So please join me now in a spirit of prayer. Amazing, loving, and gracious creator and sustainer. You give and satisfy the hunger and thirst of every living thing. We look to you when we are in need and trust in your love and abundance goodness. Just as you fed the multitudes, we ask that you fill the hearts, the minds, the spirits, and the bodies of each of us. We ask that you feed empty bellies, whether from global crisis or poverty or hard times. We ask that you feed empty hearts, lonely and longing. Fill them with your love and compassion, holding those who are most anxious, depressed, overwhelmed, or grieving. We ask that you feed tired spirits who are lost with it seems nowhere to turn. Your light and goodness can show them purpose and truth. We are so deeply grateful for your willing to give to us and please let us be a reflection of that love and compassion and generosity as we throw our doors wide and welcome the world because we know that whoever we are and wherever we are on life's journey we are welcome with you and we extend that welcome to others. Please hear us now as we lift our voice in the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our God, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
gospel lesson today comes to us from the School of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 13 through 21. The text here seems to begin in a bit awkward way, so it's important to understand the context. What Jesus had just learned is that his cousin John, John the Baptist, had been beheaded by Herod, and John's disciples had retrieved his body and taken it to be buried. Hear now the words of the evangelist. Now when Jesus heard this, he withdrew from there in a boat to a deserted place by himself. But when the crowds heard it, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd and he had compassion for them and cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples came to him and said, this is a deserted place and the hour is now late. Send the crowds away so that they may go into the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, They need not go away. You give them something to eat. They replied, We have nothing here but five loaves and two fish. And he said, Bring them here to me. Then he ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, He looked up to heaven and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to the disciples, and the disciples gave them to the crowds. And all ate and were filled, and they took up what was left over of the broken pieces, twelve baskets full. And those who ate were about five thousand men, besides women and children. This is the good news. Thanks be to God. The title for today's sermon comes from a line in Ernest Hemingway's A Farewell to Arms. The world breaks everyone, and afterward, many become strong at the broken places.
I think what Hemingway is telling us is that the struggle strengthens. We need to hear that. We really need to hear that right now. Today we heard two scripture lessons that use images of breaking and of becoming stronger. So let's start with Jesus. In the lesson from Matthew, Jesus feeds a crowd of men, women, and children. He does so when he takes, blesses, breaks, and gives bread and fish to this big group, more than 5,000. It's a miracle. It's set in a larger context, the context of another meal, one that I alluded to before the reading of the gospel lesson. At Herod's banquet, the price for entertainment was the head of John the Baptist, Jesus's cousin, the one he said was greater than any other person who had ever lived, the one we read about as the voice crying in the wilderness, the one who called for renewal and for repentance. But John's voice now had been silenced, and this becomes a pivotal moment in Jesus' mission and ministry. His cousin is dead. He felt some brokenness and he becomes stronger because he takes up John's mantle and is now the one who has all of the weight of bringing the message of renewal and repentance. And while he had his own followers, his own mission and ministry, now he really becomes the voice, sometimes crying in the wilderness like John and sometimes preaching to great crowds who were eager to eat up everything he had to offer. And he meets them all, welcomes them all, feeds them all, heals them all. And in that healing and in that nourishment, his message becomes stronger. His ministry becomes stronger. His followers become stronger. He becomes stronger. Jesus' followers literally were his companions, those who broke bread with him on the way. When we break bread and share a cup, we too are Jesus' companions. We are the body of Christ, diverse and inclusive in every way, race and gender, ethnicity, class, and identity. And the Christ is made known to us in the breaking of the bread. I've always thought it was really interesting that what we see is the whole being broken, but what we receive is the brokenness in our lives being made whole. And that's not the only story about breaking we heard today. The Hebrew uh, Bible lesson also told us today about Jacob's famous wrestling match with God. And it includes images of breaking and renewal and transformation and becoming stronger. Jacob was on the eve of uh, meeting for the first time with his long estranged brother Esau and he was scared. And he had a restless night in which he wrestled. And he was broken in that wrestling. And he would limp for the rest of his life. But that wasn't the big news in the story. The big news in the story was that he held on. And he received and claimed a new name, Israel. A new name for a new man with a new identity. And he becomes stronger at the place where he was broken. Discovering our true identity often involves struggle, a struggle to peel back the layers of uncertainty, of expectation, and of fear, to hold on and to claim who we really are authentically. Human beings created in the image of God, a God who also has been broken by the world, the world that often dismisses the divine in favor of its own self-interest. We struggle in very real ways, and we all bear scars, maybe not visible ones, but scars in our hearts or on our spirits as we too wrestle with who we are and who our neighbors are and who God is calling us to become and how to live into and out of righteousness, doing the right thing for the right reason. To grow in faith, to become truly righteous, to become the whole and healed people of God, Sometimes we wrestle with the divine and with ourselves. And when we hold on until we embody God's blessing at all costs, then we do 
truly become strong at the broken places. Disease has broken our world. We're living in and through that. Remember that disease has broken our world before and the world became stronger and it never was the same again. It moved forward and so will we. There have been other world-changing, life-changing, only going forward events in world history and in our own lives. The world breaks everyone and afterward many become strong at the broken places. I referred to a song by uh, Avery and Marsh before. It's this one. I am the church. You are the church. We are the church together. All who follow Jesus all around the world. Yes, we're the church together. We can know brokenness and we can become stronger. And in the midst of all of that, we can be together the church together, even when we are apart. We are the church together in worship. We are the church together in service. We are the church together in sorrow and in rejoicing. We're the church together in mission and ministry. We are the church together in struggle and in reconciliation. We are the church together in the breaking of the bread and the sharing of the cup. And because we are the church together, there is a place for each and every one of us at this table where Christ feeds us and where we become strong at the broken places. So come, for all things are now ready. This is the joyful feast of the victory of our God. Whoever you are and wherever you are, there is a place for you at Christ's table. The whole of creation is God's gift to us. We are called to care for all that God created, land, seas, skies, and creatures. We are the whole people of God, remembered, renewed, redeemed. May we be at peace with one another. Wherever you are and however you're worshiping, let us pass the peace of Christ together. May the peace of Christ be with you. And also with you. Let's join our hearts and minds in the great thanksgiving. God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God most high. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, holy God, with all who know you and all who love you, we join the endless refrain. Holy, 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 God of love and majesty, the whole universe sings of your glory, God most high. Blessed be the one who comes in the name of our God. Hosanna in the highest. On the night that he was betrayed, Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, broke it, saying, take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take and eat the body of Christ given for you. In the same way, after supper, Jesus took a cup. And after giving thanks, 
He gave it to his disciples and said, drink of this, all of you, for this cup is the new covenant in my blood, given and shed for you for the remission of your sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. As we minister to you in the name and spirit of the living Christ, we share with you this cup of blessing. Take and drink the blood of Christ for you. Let us give thanks to God in union with the faithful everywhere. We thank you, God, for life in the spirit of the living Christ, for gladness in this bread and cup, for love that cannot die, for peace that the world cannot give nor take away, for the glory of creation and for the mission of justice that we can make our own. Fill us with the gifts of this sacrament, oneness of heart, love and forgiveness offered and accepted, the will to serve and the willingness to grow. In your holy name we pray, amen. peace of Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us, abide with us, and grow stronger among us. Go in peace and with joy. Amen. Amen.